Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. A very warm welcome to today's program. Honorable Chief Guest, Dr. Essie Jamir, respected principal, director, faculty and staff, students, media partners, and most importantly, the ones for whom this program has been organized, our freshers, Salvite. Salvite is a word taken from the Latin, which means welcome. And therefore, I, on behalf of Tetsu College, would like to welcome each and every one of you to this program. I hope that we will all have a delightful evening together. Now, it is always said that a prayer goes a long way. Uh, before, however, before we get into the invocation prayer, I would first request our student representative to kindly come forward and felicitate our chief guest, sir, if you may. Thank you so much, sir, for gracing us with your presence today. So to begin with, like I said, a prayer goes a long way. We will now begin with the invocation prayer for which I request Haiwalo Apon, Executive Secretary, Council of Rengma Baptist Churches, to kindly come to the stage. I would also request our student representative to kindly come and facilitate Mr. Apon. Shall we look to God in prayer? Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful day that you have granted to us. We thank you for the blessings that we receive from you each new day of our lives. We thank you for your divine providence, Lord. We thank you for these wonderful students, those of them are enrolled in Tatsu College. Father, I pray, Lord, that you bless each one of them. Especially pray for the Pharisees as they prepare their hearts, as they prepare their life. I pray also that they will prepare their spiritual life. I commit them into your hand. And we thank you for this wonderful time. We thank you for all the authorities, all the admini uh, uh, people in the teaching administration. I pray that you bless them too. And we especially would like to thank you for our tall standing leader, Dr. S. C. Jamer. We thank you for his life. We thank you for so many things that he has done for our people. We pray that you will continue to bless his life so that it can be a blessing to many people. We thank you for this wonderful day, even as we celebrate together. Father, we pray that you will be in our midst and bless us in a very special way. For this I pray in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, sir, for the prayer. Uh, next, we will have our principal, Dr. Hewasa L. King, for the welcome address. Ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. Respected Chairperson, our Honorable Chief Guest, Dr. S.C. Jamir, our special guest, Mr. Sebastian Zumu, Chairman of Sovima Village Council, representatives from Sovima and Unity Village, Board of Directors members, Director, Deans, Faculty, Special Guests, our alumni, students, both old and of course our freshers this afternoon. On behalf of the Tetsuo College community, I would like to extend our warmest welcome and greetings to all of you for being a part of this very special gathering today. We are so honored to have with us such a high profile guest, Dr. S.C. Jamir, a Padma Bhushan awardee and an accomplished statesman at both the state and national level. And I'm also told he was the youngest signatory of the 16-point agreement that was signed between the government of India and the Naga People's Convention in 1960. 
Thank you so much, sir, for extending your time to be here on this Freshers Day of Tetsuo College. We look very forward to hearing you address the Tetsuo College community. As stated earlier, we are all here today to celebrate the success of our freshers. The recent HSLC, HSSLC, and UG students. As you all move on to begin a new journey and step into college life. This year at Tetsuo College, we have welcomed more than 700 students from across the different programs and courses on offer. I'd like to request all of the freshers to kindly rise from your seats so we can have a good look at all of you and congratulate you all for making it here. Can you kindly rise from your seats? All the freshers of the HS, UG, and PG level. Let's all give them a round of applause for making it this far. Congratulations. Thank you, you may be seated. I believe all of you have joined us with a purpose. Some of you might have been persuaded or pushed to take admission here at Tissot College. Some of you might have come on your own accord. Whatever reason you had for joining us, it is our firm belief that you are all meant to be here. And it is just the beginning of your journey. This year, we have students from different boards that include NBSC, CBSC, ICSC, and more. And we are also extremely happy to have a diverse profile of students representing every district in Nagaland and the different parts of Northeast too. By joining Tetsuo College, all of you freshers today are joining a community of 2,000 plus students. You are also joining a community of dreamers, thinkers, and most importantly, doers. We have started off this semester for the UG students on the 5th of July, for the PG students on the 25th of August, and for the class 11 students in July as well. And so far, we have already witnessed a host of activities by departments and clubs. Recently, we completed the selection of four students who will be representing Tetsuo College at the 2022 International Leading Together event to be held in Chennai in September, which is a joint collaboration with the University of Melbourne and four leading institutes in India. And from amongst these four selected students, Gilgal from the BA First Semester Education Honors is representing the freshers and we could not be more proud to have such a fresh entrant already getting involved and active within the student community in such a short span of time. We cannot wait to see how much more talent the rest of you have to show us. There are many more opportunities coming up and I hope to see more of you participating and getting involved. In September, we will also be hosting students from Mumbai from ML Dahanugar College. They'll be on a student exchange program visiting Tetsuo College and Nagaland, while our students will also be, be visiting their college in the month of October. We also are aware that many of our students are sports players who were representing their respective districts at the Nagaland Olympics this time. We are truly proud of our Tetsuo student community and the great people that we believe all of you will become. So today, as we welcome you all into the Tetsuo College community, we are actually welcoming you all as the graduating class of 2025 with the confidence that all of you are going to graduate and go on to do great things for our society, for your communities, and for your worlds. I might be jumping too far ahead and no, I'm not sending you off by saying this too soon, but three years from now, three years from now for the UG students and two years from now for the HS, for the higher secondary and PG students, we will be calling you our Tetsuo alumni. And we know that in this span of time, all of you are going to change and transform to become better, smarter, wiser, 
versions of what you are today. And so I encourage all of you to continue with this same determination and commitment to keep on rising. As I conclude, what I wish for all of you is to live up to our college vision and mission. And so I'm going to say it out loud once again today, hoping that you will all never forget what the college vision and mission is. Together, our mission is to empower people towards lifelong excellence. And together, our vision is to create a positive impact in this world. I conclude with a quote by W.E.B. Du Bois. There is in this world no such force as the force of a person determined to rise and the human soul can never be cha permanently chained. Good luck to the class of 2025 and to the class of 2024. May you all continue to strive for excellence. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Indeed, we are very excited to welcome our freshers, whom we, you know, we have seen amazing pool of talent that you guys have. So we are looking forward to see more of uh, a display of your talent and skills in the coming future. Uh, I am also very happy to announce that we have representatives from Sovima Village and Unity Village. And therefore, I request the representatives to kindly stand wherever you are. We would like to uh, you know, share a small token of our appreciation to all of you. Can the representatives from Sovima Village and Unity Village kindly stand wherever you are? Thank you. Student representatives, kindly do the needful. Let's all give them a big round of applause. Thank you. Now next, I call upon Dorella Jangru of BA Linguistics, who will be giving the speech on behalf of our freshers. Dorella, please take the time. Good evening, everyone. Respected Chairperson, our renowned Chief Guest, Dr. S.C. Jamir, Principal, Director, Board of Directors, Teaching and Non-Teaching Faculty, TETSO Student Council, all invitees, and my dear friends. I am honored and privileged to stand here today to deliver this speech on behalf of all the freshers. First of all, I'd like to thank God for this beautiful day and for the opportunity to gather here to celebrate together the 28th annual Freshers' Day of Tetsu College. I'd also like to thank the college on behalf of all the freshers for organizing such a wonderful program for us. Easing into Tetsu College and adjusting to the new environment has been an easy process, if I'm being honest, because from the very first day, we were all so warmly welcomed into the Tetsu family by the management, faculty members, and everyone who's a part of this college. And in such a short time, we have gotten so well acquainted with our campus, classes, professors, and friends that we have already come to feel at home here. For this, we thank the college for creating such a positive, friendly environment for us to grow in, as well as for giving us the opportunity to get the best quality education in Nagaland and to be taught by such highly qualified professors. I think it is safe to say that we are amongst the luckiest students to be able to pursue our studies and explore our talents in such a dynamic and fast developing college as this. 
Therefore, it is my hope and prayer that we freshers can live up to the good name of Tetsu and only bring laurels to the college by putting our best effort in all that we do and by living up to our potential. As we embark on this new journey, my fellow freshers, I would like to encourage each one of you to make your time in Tetsu a memorable one. As Albert Einstein said, anyone who has never made a mistake has never tried anything new. I hope we are never afraid of stepping out of our comfort zones and challenging ourselves to do something different or to be a better version of ourselves, whether that means we stumble or fall or make mistakes. After all, we learn more from mistakes than we learn from doing something correctly. And there is no better place and time for us to make mistakes, learn from them, and grow than here and now. I hope this new chapter in our lives will expose us to new experiences and allow us to find our talents and excel in our respective fields. I hope we also have fun as well as work hard and I hope we find the balance between the two. I hope through the smiles and the tears we hold on to the lessons that we learn and the friendships that we make and I hope they last for a lifetime. I hope we shine our way through our journey in Teto College and I hope we remember to always strive for excellence. Thank you. Thank you, Dorella. I would also very proudly like to announce that Dorella is also a rank holder of the NBSC HSSLC exams from the art stream. So welcome, and we are really looking forward to uh, you know, witnessing the pool of talent that you guys have. Um, before we move on to the next item, can I also request our media partners to kindly stand wherever you are. We would also like to facilitate you guys. Media partners. Student representatives, you are requested to do the needful. A round of applause for them as well. Thank you. Now next, we have a very special performance, a traditional performance by the Music and Dance Club of Tetsu College. Performers, you are requested to take the stage. Oh, 
Thank you to the Music and Dance Club, two beautiful voices in harmony, and our students in their glorious traditional attire. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. And now, for the next item, I call upon Masherville Lutu, president of Tetsuo Alumni Network, for the alumni speech. Hello. Thank you, Chair Lady. My unflinching respect to our chief guest, Dr. S.C. Jamir, individuals in the program, dignitaries, their associates, and others who came along with them, academic heads, college uh, staffs, teaching staffs, the students community, good evening to you all. Salvete 2022. Batch, welcome. The Tito Alumni Network heartily welcomes you all to the ever-growing Tatsu family. Grasp every opportunity the college is providing you when you are here. Grapple the time, make it memorable. Engage in taking chances. Lift up your wings and soar higher when you are here. Develop your traits, your skills, and your personality so that you can go out and you are already trained, prepared to take up the ambition, your dreams in the competitive, challenging world. As our principal have already said, you are already an alumni. Today, you are fresh, a fresher, a student. Tomorrow soon, as the time flies very fast, you'll be already an alumni within no time. That there is an alumni network team that makes and tries and focuses to strengthen the network, connecting each student in the state, across the country, and all over the world. Our alumni scattered, but we are connected because we are an alumni of Tetsuo College. 
wherever you are and wherever you go, you are already and will be an ambassador. So I encourage the freshers to be the channel of shining evermore, wherever you go. This year, by the third quarter of this 2022, the alumni executive will be calling upon one of our alumni, our elected representative, MLA Sri Medoyoka, advisor, technical education and elections, government of Nagaland, to grace our alumni reunion. We are already prospecting and connecting with our alumni here, near and far. We will be engaging our alumni who are all on their fields in different spheres, working from the very big, uh, first bench till the present bench. We called upon our alumni to be present during the alumni reunion. There will be obstacles, challenges, discomfort, and displeasure when you are here. But I urge and implore you to ignore this and do not grumble, but make the most of this college when you are here. Use the facilities and make yourself a refined, a polished ruby so that you can go and shine. The alumni, the alumni network, the team also helps and assists students and also the alumni in providing, the first, providing them the first privilege in terms of jobs, opportunities and avenues. The alumni is always here. We are active on our social media platforms. You can always connect and get all the necessary helps you want from us. As you are already here and will be soon an alumni, I urge you to know your interest and associate with the alumni and the college to benefit the most and to take out the most of this college. At the end, I welcome you again once. Have a very blessed and joyous evening. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Mashivil. We hope that the Tetsu Alumni Network will continue to grow and that it will help us in you know, shaping the future of our students as well as the college. I would also request our student representative to kindly come forward and felicitate Mashivil Lutu. And now we will have an announcement by Lerete Kutso, um, Assistant Professor, Department of Political Science. The Governor's Doctor T. Ao Scholarship was established when the Honorable Governor Sri P. B. Acharya visited the Tso College on Scholastic Day, 23rd January 2017. This award is given to the sports students studying at the Tso College, encouraging the awardees to strive for excellence. This year, Dr. T. Ao's Scholarship Award 2020 are Tushi Jamir from BBA and Dezengunyo Lina from Political Science. These two individuals have re represented the college at various levels, state level and the national level. Senti Tushi has participated in the JV Foundation Basketball Tournament. He also participated in the Open Basketball Tournament Kohima. He was also the college basketball team captain. Currently, he is the coach of the Tetsuo College Basketball Team. I invite uh, Sebastian Zimmer, the Ch Village Council Sovima, to hand over the gifts to the awardees. 
Ja, ja. Liene, she is the representative of Tetsuo College, representing college, our college at various levels. Now, currently, she is representing our college at Nagaland Olympics and Paralympics. Currently, they are held in Longland 2022, so she is not here today with us. She also is the runners up of under, 20, under 17 category inter district basketball tournament held inter-district badminton tournament held in 2019. She also won the Kelo Indian District Tournament Bas Badminton Champion in 2019. And currently, she is representing a college again here in 2020 in Long Longland. In her absence, I would want to invite Ms. KV to receive the award on her behalf. Thank you. Thank you, Lerete. We are really happy that we have got uh, students who are, you know, receiving such kind of scholarships. So apart from our Dr. T. Au scholarship, Tetsu College also offers many more other scholarship and financial aids to our students, which includes the Tetsu Excellence Scholarship. It includes the Tetsu um, Council of Ringma Baptist Church's scholarship. We have got the Dr. P.S. Lorin Financial Aid Scholarship as well, which we are proud to announce that many of our students have availed it. And this is one of the ways in which we are trying to fulfill our, you know, vision of creating a positive impact in the world. So kudos to our college. Now, um, the next item that we have is the introduction of our very special chief guest, uh, which will be presented to us by Mr. Sebastian Zumvu, who is the chairman, Sovima Village Council. Sir, please take the time. I would also request our student representative to kindly come forward and facilitate Sir Zumvu. You can come here and take it, sir. Thank you. I bring uh, greetings and warm wishes from the village council of Sovima and I wish each and every one of you gathered here this evening a very beautiful evening. It is a proud privilege for me to be standing in front of such a huge a multitude of young people this evening. And it's all thanks to my young friend, Mr. Kulo Lorin, for making this possible. Thank you. I'm privileged to be here. Even though Tetsuo College falls under my village jurisdiction, I haven't had the privilege of being around, and this is my first day to be here in this campus, in this beautiful, sprawling campus, I should say. All these years, I've heard many, many good things about the village, I mean, the, about the college that is here in the village. I've heard about the infrastructure, the good national quality infrastructure that is provided here by the college. I've also heard of the quality of the faculty here of this college and also the quality of education imparted to the students of this college and most importantly the discipline that is imbibed into the minds of the young students. Though it's awfully belated, I must take this opportunity to thank this college for making our village proud 
what a couple of months back, when the district administration required all the villages in the vicinity of the national highway to conduct social walks, your college was kind enough to arrange more than 250 volunteers who came and walked tirelessly, even though for a few hours only, on the national highway, and that was the sign sure of all the passers-by, and it was the envy of all the neighboring villages, and the very presence of your volunteers that morning had made the Deputy Commissioner of Chumugidima, Mr. Uh, Abhinav Shivam, to write a personal letter to the village council thanking the council for arranging such a large number of volunteers. The credit of that letter or that acknowledgement should have rightly belonged to Tetsuo College. I thank you for that generosity on your part. I also must thank the administrators of this uh, college for arranging dozens of blood volunteers, blood donors rather, who came forward when our village council organized a blood donation camp two months back. I forget the date now, but it was two months back. And the officers manning the blood bank at the civil hospital, Dimapur, they were very impressed and have thanked us profusely. I must also convey those profuse thanks to all the young people here who have come forward. And in future also, I expect young healthy people like you all to come forward and donate blood when there are people requiring blood and staying there in intensive care units unable to find blood, why not us, healthy people walking around, come forward and donate blood? That is a subject very close to my heart and I will take this opportunity to make an appeal to all the, the young friends to come forward as and when such donation drives are organized. The other day, when today's program was circulated on the social media, and then I will be doing the introduction of uh, Dr. S. Jamir, a friend of mine called me up and said, hey, you got it all wrong. Dr. S. Jamir doesn't know, need any introduction. Who doesn't know him? You please introduce the crowd to him, one by one. But considering the number of uh, people here, sir, I don't think that'll be possible. But it has been a proud privilege for me when in 1998, when I was 28 or 28, I won't mention things that have been reported in the papers or in uh, periodicals or in literature, but I wish to inform the gathering here that way back in 1958, when he was freshly out of the university, 
after finishing his LLB from uh, Allahabad University, he was barely 27 years old. And those days, in the 50s, Nagas went through such a tumultuous time that uh, not you, but even me also, I didn't live through, got to know only through literature and only through oral history that has been passed on by elders. But he was barely 27 years old when he attended the second Naga People's Convention held at his na native village, Ungma. And he was appointed as the Joint Secretary of the Naga People's Convention. And he, along with his elders, shouldered the responsibilities of the Naga people then. The personality, the aura, and the respect that he commanded from the people can be imagined by his peers and his youngers who recall decades and decades later on that whenever the young Jamir walks through the town, Mokokchung town, people used to stand aside, <coughs> point out at him from behind his back or from ahead and say, hey, that is Mr. Esi Jamir. Itu Esi Jamir Rasatu. That's what they used to say behind his back. We can only imagine the, the, the respect that he had Excuse me. From such a very tender age of 27, he had been, like I said, working with his elders like Dr. Im Kong Liba, late Mr. Vizal, Mr. J.B. Jasoke, and also, yes, our uh, late Mr. Sensei Rengma, who happens to be the, your principal, none other than your principal, Hawasa is married to the grandson of his friend, Mr. Sensei. Yes, Mr. Jamir has been associated with elderly people from a very tender age. And you all must be knowing that in, uh, from uh, 59, 1959, when the third convention of the Naga people were held, was held, a memorandum was submitted to the then Prime Minister. I should say, one of the towering statesmen, statesmen of the earlier half of the last century, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, and I don't exactly know how many times Mr. Jamir had interacted with uh, Mr. Nehru, but I'm very sure I can say with uh, confidence that he must have impressed Mr. Nehru so much that in 1961, May 5th to be precise, Mr. Jamir, when he was hardly 31 years old, he was appointed as the parliamentary secretary to the great Mr. Nehru, who was then the prime minister. And you all must have heard about the Cuban crisis when the, the United States and the USSR were on the brink of bringing the world to a nuclear war. An Indian delegation was sent to the United Nations and the young Mr. Jamir, when he was hardly 32, he was appointed as the political advisor to that delegation. He walked under Mr. K.V. Krishnamanan, the then defense minister, and during the many interactions that I have had with Mr. Jamir, he used to recall how the United Nations used to call emergency meetings at midnight. And when great personalities like Adlai Stevenson of the United States and also Andre 
Gromyko, the permanent uh, representative of the USSR to the United Nations, they had heated arguments for and against each other for themselves and against the other. And uh, Mr. Jamir was uh, privileged, I should say, to have been personally present there listening to all these developments which shaped the course of human history. That was way back in 1962. And you also, you all must remember that it was in, uh, on the October 20, when the Chinese incursion took place in, in India. And for us Indians, that eclipsed what transpired in Cuba when Russia tried to install nuclear weapons in Cuba, not even 90 miles from the American soil. Naturally, America opposed it, just as Russia is opposing Ukraine joining the United Nations, I mean the NATO these days. He had been associated with towering world figures and national figures that it is no wonder that his outlook, his temperament, his mentality is of national level and many, many of us Nagas will find it very hard to comprehend what he thinks of politics, of Naga politics, or of Naga political issue. What he had been saying 25, 30 years back about how Naga political problems should be solved, he was criticized then, his life was attempted several times, not only once, but four times. But I think he must derive the maximum pleasure when, he was, when it has come to pass that what he was saying 25 years back is what is actually happening now. And you all remember that a couple of months back, the Prime Minister of India, the Home Minister of India invited him to Delhi to seek his opinion on various issues. I call upon Mr. Jamir, sir, to come and share with us what you feel, maybe from the start or wherever, because you will agree with me after listening to him. It is always a learning and a pleasure to listen to the great legendary old band of Nagaland politics. Dr. S. Jamir, sir. I'll just announce once. So thank you so much, Sir Zumvu, for the perfect introduction to our chief guest. And now for one of the most awaited even, I request Dr. S.C. Jamir to kindly take the time for his address to all of us. Can we have a big round of applause for Sir? Why? Because in their mind, in their heart, and in their eyes, there is a glimpse of the future. 
And I know that the younger generation who are assembled here, you have got a vision of Nagaland. And since you are the builders of the future, you are the leaders of the future, I am very sure that you have a glimpse of the kind of Naga future during your time. And I pray to God that your endeavor, your vision, will be fructified during your time. Deliberately, I have chosen my theme to speak to you this evening. Try us with the future of Nagaland. But before I dwelt on this theme, I would like to preface the kind of situation the world of the Nagas are placed today. If you have to design the future, you should know the past and the present. And therefore, I want to have a panoramic view of the entire landscape of this great country, or great land of ours. We are facing very peculiar negative features in Nagaland. And that negativism has blocked the very survival, the very existence of Naga people. And what are these features? Sometimes I think that instead of blaming each other now, let us take the whole There is no point in criticizing individuals or groups, but let us have introspection, retrospection, and analysis. What have we done as a Naga people? Otherwise, if we started criticizing, blaming each other, then there will be no way out to steer the sheep of the state to the golden shore. And therefore, by taking the entire responsibility on the Naga people themselves, let us now look into what really are the impediments, what really are the problems, what really are the negative elements that are retarding our growth our unity, our survival. I always feel that the Nagaland, we are virtually portraying the Tower of Babel. When they built up this Tower of Babel, it was with unity. By the same people, with the same objective, and their ambition was to build a tower reaching the sky. But what happened? In due course of time, they have relied too much on their own strength. They become proud. They said, it is by themselves. And what happened? God intervenes. And those people who are working unitedly with one accord, they started speaking different languages. They couldn't even understood each other. And I think we have replicated the same thing in Nagaland today. In the beginning, the leaders of yesterday years, 
they had a dream of a united robbers naga land and with one accord with one purpose and with one mind and with one objective they started but today what you find exactly like tower of babel multiple factions not only underground overground also speaking different language talking about different approaches and they are talking about naga cause naga cause naga cause but that cause is no nowhere because we are quarreling among ourselves we are divided by ourselves no one has divided us it is we ourselves have divided among ourselves and today we are reaping the bitter fruits it's not a sweet the bitter fruits we are reaping today and that is one of the negative features of nagaland secondly i feel that we don't hear in nagaland except blame game criticism we don't hear anything about appreciation acknowledgement what has gone wrong with nagaland people we don't like to even appreciate what people have done good things we want to only criticize so there is total absence of the milk of human kindness in naga society today and that is what you young generation you is a great challenge for you to overcome to surmount this negative elements that is blocking in naga society that's another one now what, what is this negativism i think this is a tendency to to do opposite now when naga people are crying let there be unity among naga people let the factions come to one platform then instead of that again they are fighting uh, criticizing each other is it not negativism it is and this will not help us when the naga people are crying crying that there should be peace settlement then again they don't like the settlement uh, that the negative attitude have developed for 20 years more than 20 years the government of india they have been very lenient and it was at the initiative of the underground leaders that cease fire was arranged because they also felt that armed revolution will not be able to achieve the goal and therefore they themselves voluntarily at their own volition they have decided to have ceasefire ceasefire for what to carry on the political negotiation peacefully in a democratic way and i believe for 20 years 25 years it was at the bidding of the underground government have they said yes yes we shall have talk in bengal yes in geneva yes in tokyo here yes government have they said yes 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 they have never ever disturbed the program of our naga leaders who would like to talk to government of india but at last at long last they have to come back why in foreign countries was there any country which have help us no therefore 
through their political wisdom, recognizing that contemporary political realities, both in the world and in the country and in their own state, they came back after 20 years discussion, they have drawn up what is called agreement by both the parties. They put their signature. And at that time, what have they done? Clapping hands, shaking hands. Is it not a sign of approval? Is it not a sign of endorsement? And as a Christian, as a Naga, I sincerely feel that we should be true to our promise. We should be true to our oath. And we have to exhibit to the country and the world that Naga people stand by their own word and their own deed. But it is not happening today. My dear young friends, it is not happening today. Why? Our people are not honest. We, are, we have become very unchristian. So this are the problem you have to face today. Now Naga people, Naga underground, not only the overground. Today there are so many talking shops. Everywhere talking, 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 talking. But we want workshop. Not talking shop, but we want workshop to produce, to harness. But that is utterly lacking in this part of the country. As an old man, I always feel very sad. What had gone wrong? with these beautiful people who occupy the world of the Nagas. And there is one very big issue, problem, challenges, which you younger generation have to face and surmount. That's one. Now, if we had to build up a future, a trials with the future of Nagano, what could it be done? We dream dreams for a brave, robust, united, peaceful, progressive Nagaland where there will be plenty of opportunities for our younger generation. And that is a kind of vision we have. But today, we have lost a vision. And they said, if the vision is there, and without vision, if they act, it is like a daydream. And when you act with a vision also, then it is nightmare. And that is exactly happening in Nagaland. We don't know whether it is black, whether it's a white, we are chasing placket in the dark. And the placket is not also there. But we're chasing, chasing that placket in the dark, in darkness. And that is exactly happening in this part of the world. Now, if you have to build up the future, as I have said, it should be a robot, united, progressive, where there will be plenty of opportunities for young people to develop. Then how do we start? Remember, when we talk about progress, whether it is in the life of a nation or individual, what is the most important thing is, it implies an ideal. Unless you have an ideal, you cannot really draw up your program. And therefore, for building of a nation, a building of a state, Naga society, 
we require an ideal. And how to achieve that ideal? When, upon the consciousness of the people, there begins a dawn, the vision of weakness, realizing our own weakness. And when is the result of this? Is begotten or is born a longing for national reconstruction, national reformation. And when the minds of the people are stirred up, then they will be able to freely pile out the sheep of the state to the golden shore. And that is what exactly what we want today. They have to navigate without any obstruction. Once you have that one. In other words, we have been all the time talking about beauty of Naga people. You know very well that from distance it lends charm. When you look from distance, very charming. But as you go nearer and nearer, then the hazy pictures comes huh, into focus. Then what you discover? The ugliness. The spot becomes clearly visible so that we know, oh, it's not beautiful. It is ugly. And then your enthusiasm, it evaporates then and there, yielding place to, oh yes, this is real, this is unreal. I think that re recognition, that realization is very, very important today. Because whatever we are talking, say, we are looking from a distance. And as if everything is charming. But everything is not charming, my dear friends. Now, in your way, you'll definitely find lots of problems. And I have said, the most dangerous problem will be an obnoxious, as you said, it will be a negative features, which it is already imbibed in the very vein of our own people. And we have been witnessing fragmentation of undergone people, fragmentation of overgone people. During our time, my time, we have never discussed about Tenemia group or CNDC or EMBO, we have never discussed. But what had gone wrong now? My dear young friends, you rise above this tribalism. If you have to build up Nagaland, a robust Nagaland, above, you rise above this. Because today, leaders they are talking about tribe. Not country, not people. Then how can we expect a bright future when people don't talk about the future? And Naga people are so obsessed, especially leaders, not only underground but overground. They are very much interested only in the past events, past glory. They talk only about Naga Club, Seven Commission. Leave side. This is a part of history. But we are not living in history. We have to make history. Are you not uh, trying to make new history? Much more than this uh, past. But leaders, I don't know. Why they are only so obsessed only with this uh, past, past, past. Both underground and overground leaders. So should we not? change our mindset to look forward and come to sense because many thousand thousand yesterday has passed thousand thousand tomorrow so so have already passed but one thing is with us today is always with you with me it doesn't change and that is the time when you have to do 
You can do when, when you are today. Yesterday you cannot do. And therefore, if you have to build up the future, you realize the importance of today, the present, which is in you, with you, all of us will be with you. That's what I want to tell you. Now for many, many years, Naka people were subjected with Khan culture. And that has created fierce psychosis. And when the fair psycho says, people don't speak out the truth. Uh, even in the Bible you say, mm. if you know the truth, huh, everything will fall out. But we are not uh, learning, knowing the truth. That's all. We are not um, making any headway in any way. Because truth is absent from our society and perhaps <laughs> from our mind also. I'm afraid. That's what is one thing which I would like to tell you. A people dominated by fear. A people contaminated by corruption. A people in deeply sunk in confusion. They cannot rise up. And therefore, let us give up this negative features which is really making inroad in the Naga society. Let us put a stop to this one. Now, we are all just blaming. What do you do? Now they are fake in the living in the make-believe, the world in case. Now, as I told you, pass, pass. There is a saying, no? Flaking the dead horse. We are all just flaking the dead horse. It'll not move. And we're exactly indulged in that only flag in the dead horse. I think let us ride on the living horse. Not flagging that dead horse. It will not move. Secondly, now the rampant corruption. Don't blame on the government. The entire people are corrupt. That's why I said, why not? We have salvation out of this horrors. And what is the way out? We believe in a God. And that is our God. Which believe in righteousness of a nation. Should we not adhere? to the biblical teaching to make our country, our people righteous so that it can be exalted. And that is the challenge for you young people. Thirdly, you won't mind, mm -hmm. in Nagaland, it's a, we have declared in Nagaland is a land of fishes. That means no work. And it was followed by road shows, fashion shows, beauty contest, celebrations of jubilees, various jubilees. And I believe a person bus class three, Thanksgiving, full of this entertainment, merriment. Will it help our economy? Our economy? These are all negative aspects of our life. Yes. But if now even beauty condition has gone to the village level also. Fortunately, monkey have not decided to have beauty condition. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, in Nagaland now, male beauty condition, village, tribe. I don't know what had gone wrong with our people. I wish we are scolded by monkeys. We are also here like this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Now, therefore, I would tell our younger generation, be positive in your approach. If for a better future, let us reinvent, transform the Nagaland of today 
for a better future for the thorough overhauling of the entire system which is already broken. A letter government cannot do. Why? So many government now. Now we have many prime ministers. We have many presidents. So in Portugal, the elected government chief minister has become only the third in Portugal. Huh? And that is a kind of government we have, helpless. Huh? So what are you going to do with this? Is it real or a dream? Now, many of, of us, for whom they build tools, are you sure? For whom they build tools? It does not toll for others, but it tolls for us. I don't want you to realize that. It tolls for us. It will be worthwhile for us, especially the youth, to take note of today's reality. Vis-a-vis -vis the pan-Indian as well as prevailing global scenario. You will be a citizen of the world, not confined to your tribe, not to your village. Your vision, your outlook, your mindset should be global. Because you are living in a very competitive world. And therefore I urge you that you should develop a global outlook, a global mind, and a global attitude towards life. An American uh, writer, Dennis Wedley, he said, because he has written a book, Empires of the Mind, and he especially emphasized that what worked yesterday will not work today. What was relevant yesterday will not be relevant today. What was spoken yesterday was will not be relevant today. And he said, while determining the global economy, in the past, we think about resources. Whether a country has got sufficient resources or not. But today, it is the knowledge. Knowledge is the power. And today we are having economy based on knowledge. And therefore, he said, this world is in that line, so you should go on that line. Now, you have so many challenges, and you cannot remain quiet. Swami Vivekananda said, while you are journeying your life, he said, arise, awake, and stop not till the great God is rich. So my dear young students, you should keep awake. You should arise. And don't stop until you achieve your goal. I think your, uh, this time, the senior, uh, this um, student also said the same thing. I think that's correct. Now, I was, lastly, I would like to only say like this. If we have to live as a united, harmonious society, let us forget about I, I, I. Because in our older generation, we should support the talents and give them space for development. But today, because of this deep competition, now the culture of I has come. There's nothing wrong in that. But you should say, not only I, but I and others too. You should remember not only I, but others also. And another thing is, I want to quote this also. Vivekananda says, the greatest religion is to be true to your own nature. Unless you are true to yourself, how can you be true to, even to God? 
Have faith in yourself. You have to grow from the inside out. None can teach you. There is no other teacher but your own. The secret of great success, of the true happiness of this, the man or woman who asks for no return. The perfectly unselfish person is the most successful they alone who live for others. I think we have to imbibe that spirit in the younger generation of Naga people because today our people have become too greedy, too greedy. And therefore, this spirit should be imbibed. Nagaland is a threshold to embark on a new, I think, uh, era of peace and stability. Hence, you of Nagaland to be a standard torchbearer, not father, but standard torchbearer of all the good that we have lived for and we seek for. May it be given to your to face life problem with clear eyes and without fear and ill will. I think if we imbibe the spirit, Nagaland will shine, Nagaland will be a robust, united, prosperous, harmonious, progress state. And all depends upon you young people. You surmount all these uh, challenges and build up that future of Nagaland to be a pride, a jewel of this great country. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. You are indeed a source of inspiration to all of us. And like our chief guest has mentioned, we hope that our students will grow to be able leaders of the future and history makers. We hope that we will all learn to be true to ourselves. Uh, once again, thank you so much, sir. That was a very, uh, a very beautifully put address. Next, we have the vote of thanks. Uh, by B. Tenjin Sinap Longchar, who is the General Secretary, Tetsu, uh, Tetsu Student Council. But before we go to that, I would like to apologize for the technical inconveniences that we have faced. Uh, thank you so much for the patience. I would also like to request our students to kindly be seated in your place because we will soon be starting with the informal session, which will be, uh, there will be a lot of more fun programs there as well. Now let me request our um, General Secretary, Mr. Temjan Sunab Longchar. A very good evening to everyone. As we arrive towards the end of the Soviet Freshers' Day 2022, I, on behalf of the Detso Student Council, stand here to say a few words of gratitude to the ones who have made this event a success. Firstly, I'm grateful to our almighty God for the privilege and also the grace to have held this event successfully. I extend my heartfelt gratitude on behalf of the Dead Soul Student Council and all the students to our most respected chief guest, Dr. S. C. Jamir and his family. Thank you, sir, for gracing this occasion and also encouraging us with your wisdom. We are truly honored to have you here and also we are all surely inspired by your life. I would like to thank the authority headed by our director and the principal and all the Datso College teaching faculties and also the non-teaching staffs for your various contribution and support in making this event happen. Thank you all very much for your trust and your support. I would like to extend my thanks to all the participants of both the formal and informal sessions. We are encouraged and also we are very refreshed looking at your spirit. I would also like to thank the IT team, NSS, NCC, Maintenance and Support Service, Student Council Advisors, Disciplinary Committee, Datsa Arena, the Title Contest Judges, Bello Boys Home and Sydney Girls Home for your precious contribution to the event. 
it wouldn't have been complete without your help. I'm grateful to my fellow members of the Dead Soul Student Council. Each one of you has contributed your best, and working with you all has truly encouraged me personally too. Thank you for your relentless effort and spirit of unity that has made everything flow smoothly. Finally, I wouldn't be able to wrap up my word of thanks without extending my gratitude to my friends, to the old faces, and also to the new ones. Thank you all for being here and celebrating in the right attitude. And let us all continue to celebrate each other in the days to come. Thank you all and have a lovely evening. Before we go to the last program of this session, I would like to make a few announcements. So, um, I would like to thank our chief guest for providing us with copies of his speech, which our volunteers have distributed to our guests, and we will also be distributing it to the students. That is the first announcement. Uh, we are also very happy and grateful that Sir Jamir has agreed to take photos with the students. Uh, that's why after the benediction, students who are, you know, who wants to take the photos with Sir Jamir. You're most welcome to do that because Sir Jamir has agreed to that. Thank you so much, sir. And um, I would also like to announce that our program, Salvite, will be telecasted at 8 p.m. on Hornbill TV. So for the ones of you who have missed it out and you would like your, you know, family members and friends to watch it, you're most welcome to inform them about the same. And the last announcement. There will be attendance soon after the uh, formal session. All right, so kindly be seated in your place. We will be taking your announcement. Uh, we will be taking your attendance. So this is the situation here, sir. <laughs> but thank you so much for your patience. And now coming to the end of our program, we will have Akali Sumi, Assistant Professor and Senior Advisor to Evangelical Union, Tetsu College Unit for the benediction. Akali, please take the time. Let us place ourselves in the presence of our Lord. Gracious, loving Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for your unfailing love and grace upon our community. Lord, you are worthy to be praised and to be honored. Therefore, we come before you and honor you for who you are. Lord, we are so much blessed to have a dynamic community and making us witness the multicolors in our community, Lord Father. Father, Thank you for blessing our students with varieties of gifts and talents, Lord. Continue to mold them and shape them even in the days to come. Father God, I also pray that you bless our honorable speaker with good health and more of your wisdom, Lord. Continue to use him in your purpose and in inspiring many young minds, Lord Father. Father God, I also pray that you bless our, all our invitees who have come today to grace our program with their presence, Lord Father. Father God, I also pray that you bless each individual who have given the time and effort and have worked tirelessly for the success of this event, Lord Father. Father God, even at this hour, we come before you as a community and give you thanks for your presence throughout the program, Lord Father. Father God, as we disperse from this very place, disperse us with your love and protection, Lord. We commit all our lives and the rest of the day into your mighty hand in God's most precious name we pray Amen